Give an iPad and a rotor to a caveman and they'd probably throw it into wild boar or something. But blink twice and we're in the 21st century, where we have turned the air around us into infinite web of knowledge and cat videos with the help of Wi-Fi. How on earth did we manage to do that? Well, grab a hat and settle down, because this tale is a wild ride. So you're sitting in lounge, coffee in hand, comfortably warm friend's mug, typing out this document in your laptop. The words you type now actually begin in the form of ones and zeros. Let's say one is a dot and zero is a dash. So if your laptop wants to send out a hello, it changes it into dots and dashes and pushes it through the Wi-Fi card. Stack up enough dots and dashes and you can write an entire email about your dog's quarantine grooming attempts or, you know, the latest company financial report. But how's it turned into radio waves? This is where it gets dicey. But hang on. Think of it like a Morse code, but a gazillion times faster, say for 2.4 billion times per second. The Wi-Fi card in your laptop converts these binary bits into a current that turns on and off electrons at, you guessed it, 2.4 billion times per second, creating 2.4 billion electromagnetic waves per second. Now those waves travel through the air and reach your Wi-Fi rotor. The rotor's antenna picks up the wave and converts it back into an electrical signal or binary information. Running it through its darling child, the demodulator, that transforms it from a wave into a familiar language of dots and dashes, or ones and zeros. Now that they are back in the language that your rotor understands, ready to get sent out to the internet via a wired connection, hence the dog's grooming pictures are ready to break the internet. But hang on, we have a problem. If your sibling is streaming the latest Kardashian's drama unfolding episode, while your folks are on Zoom call, how does the rotor prevent all of this data colliding? Well, let's say each device has a unique color. So your laptop is emitting green lights, siblings mobile radiates purple, and the gold old parent's laptop emits pink. The rotor is smart enough to differentiate and handle each color separately. Also, it schedules the data packets so cleverly, it can handle multiple incoming and outgoing messages simultaneously. One could say it's like an air traffic controller, adapted multitasking. But what about Mr. Sneaky Pants next door, who's always trying to connect as your device and use your Wi-Fi? Oh well, this is where your password comes handy. When your device sends a handshake to your rotor, saying, hello, it's me, it adds the password. If Mr. Sneaky Pants can reply appropriately with the hello Adele, the rotor slams the door shut. And just like that, once a minute every minute, this magic is happening all around us, allowing us to learn, work, and watch funny videos of cats being scared by cucumbers. So there you have it. You're now ready to build your own Wi-Fi network with Peebles and Fire. Or maybe not. That said, subscribe and hit the magic bell. Each like will help turn me into a Wi-Fi guru. Let me turn on this magical Wi-Fi light. Every thumbs up only makes it shine brighter. Thank you.